Yo, Elliot, I'm 24 and I've always been the black sheep in my family. I grew up in a really toxic household with three brothers. But as I grew older, I realized that I was the load bearer for the family. My parents vented and came to me for advice and I helped them and my two brothers onto a more righteous and honorable path. That's amazing, man. The problem is my third brother, I feel like he's very closed off to himself. We both trade stocks and he thinks and talks like he's very aware, but he's not. He neglects working on himself, trying to better himself, learning, reading, et cetera. Anytime I try to tell him stuff, he always says something along the lines of, you don't think I already know that? It's arrogant. Then we, then he's, sometimes he's sitting next to me losing big sums of money and I get emotional too because I feel his pain and end up hurting myself too. I want better for my brother, which sabotages me. I feel like I get held behind because I constantly lose my focus because I'm watching him hit all, hit his head against the wall all the time over and over again. I don't want to judge him and I can't force him to change or make better decisions, but how can I keep this or anyone else looking to me for support from sabotaging myself and losing focus? P.S. I would love to move out, but culturally I'm kind of stuck right now taking care of my parents and contributing in the house while building the framework I need to move forward. Thanks. So have you ever heard the term caretaker's dilemma? The caretaker's dilemma. The caretaker's dilemma is this, that they're so busy helping other people. They become so lost in serving others that they forget to take care of themselves. And then the dilemma is when you don't protect yourself because you're so busy helping other people, you begin to lose the vitality. You begin to lose the motivation, you begin to lose the grace that's been given to you in order to help other people. And it's almost a form of narcissism to be helping a lot of people. Why do I say that? Because it gives, you, like for example, you even say, I've been the black sheep in the family. But what is that? That is giving myself a label. That's, that's associating myself with an ideal. That is saying that there's something I need to live up to. And if I can't get other people to receive my help, then I am diminished as a person. And that's exactly what's happening to you right now. There are those you say that came to you for advice and you were able to help them. But there are others who don't want your advice, but you're having a hard time with it. So my advice to you is to recognize that you're thinking that perhaps there's some good that you're displaying, there's some good that you're doing by trying to help your brother is absolutely nothing but self-destructive and you're just gonna piss him off like you've been pissing him off right now. There's a, there's a line in the Bible where Jesus says, cast not your pearls before swine. And he says essentially that if you cast your pearls, basically your goods to somebody who doesn't want it, they're just gonna, they're gonna get mad and they're gonna attack you, right? First of all, they don't know how to value the pearl, right? A pig is a fucking pig. It doesn't have a value pearls. It looks at it and it's like, well, I can't eat this. What are you giving me this garbage for, right? Right? Somebody who could appreciate it is going to say, oh, wow, this is beautiful. This is valuable. And, you know, do something worthwhile with it. A pig is just going to look at it and be like, get the hell out of here. And then he's going to look at you like, this is what you're giving me? And they'll attack you. They'll resent you. They'll hate you. So the caretaker's dilemma. The dilemma comes in when you start to lose because of what you're giving. And if you continue to lose through giving and not filling yourself back up, you're going to be burnt out. And that's, that could come in mental, emotional, and physical burnout. And you're beginning to experience it. Here's another one from Jesus, another one in the Bible, right? The story of the sower, the story of the sower of seeds. There's a guy, he's got some seeds. He wants to spread his seeds, but he recognizes that not all these seeds are gonna grow. Some of those seeds grow, they, they fall on rocky ground, right? Where the sun burns them up. Some of them fall amongst the weeds where the weeds eat them up. Some of them fall somewhere and the birds take them away. Some of them fall in fertile soil and they become fruitful. The whole thing is that in order for the sower to be successful in his sowing, he has to be detached. He can't be worried about the ones that fell on rocky ground. It's just chance, right? 
It's just chance. It, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm here. I'm sowing the seeds, but some of them are falling over there and they're going away. Imagine that, imagine that farmer, he's spreading all these seeds, right? And every time you're helping somebody as a caretaker, you're spreading seeds. I do this, right? And I've had this dilemma myself as well. I've had to check myself and repent, turn around and do things differently. That's why I can talk to you from this place of authority about it. I know what it's like. There, there are times when I'm making videos and I'm thinking everybody should be able to get this and this is gonna help a lot of people. And then it turns around that, well, a lot of people are actually getting angry at me for what I said. People are leaving nasty comments. Someone just made a reaction video trying to dissect and break apart and discredit everything I've said. So that's like the seed, video, advice, whatever, that fell on rocky ground. What can I do about that? Should I stop spreading the seeds, right? Because now that becomes a part of the dilemma too, because, well, you're called. You said that you're, in a way, you're, you're different than your family. Maybe you're called to this place of leadership in your family, but you're taking it personally when they don't receive the seed, when they don't receive the pearl, right? So if I just, just turn it around to see if it was me, I was doing that. That would mean that because there are people, like I said, I've fallen into this trap before. I'm not telling you this because it's a good idea. I'm telling you because I've suffered. If I start behaving in a way that expects everyone to love all my videos and to receive all my videos and take my advice and to change their life, and that doesn't happen, I can start to say, well, I'm just not going to do anything more. I'm not going to make, I, I, can, I would start to pout. And it sounds like that's what you're doing right now. You're starting to pout, right? You lose your focus. You feel his pain. Why aren't you listening to me? Look at it. Look at you. You're not doing what I said and it sucks. Dude, be detached. Be totally detached like the seed sower. The seed sower lets go of that seed and whatever happens to the seed happens to the seed. I make these videos, whatever happens to the video, happens to the video. You give advice, whatever happens to them, whether they take the advice or not, you're free, you're free, you're free. Now, just to bring it full circle and point the finger back at you, because this is your fault. You have to give up having per personal identification with the results of other people. I can't take all of your results personally. There are some of you guys in this program that come to every single lesson, that watched every single lesson, did every single homework, and I watch your life as it evolves. It's amazing. You guys send me the video, you send me an email, you let me know, or I meet you here in the calls. I was like, Elliot, my whole life has changed. Things are better. Things are awesome. That makes me feel good. But if I had that same expectation for every single person who maybe they're not doing the homework, maybe they're not going to the calls, maybe they're not taking action, if I get too wrapped up in that person's result, I'm being egotistical. I'm being narcissistic because I think they need to receive my gift. Why aren't you receiving my gift? Why won't you take my gift? Right? Who does that? Nobody does that. Right? Un unless, unless you're hoping for something in return. And what you're hoping for in return in an unconscious way is satisfaction in knowing that, ah, oh, I've helped my brother. Ah, oh, he's taking my advice, right? You got to rid yourself from the need of that satisfaction. I'll leave you with one more, one more quote. I think this was Alan Watts, right? Alan Watts, I think, said this, right? He says, I think of myself as a fountain. And as a fountain, I'm going to, from a bubbling spring, I'm just going to bring forth water, right? What does a bubbling spring, a fountain do? It's just bringing up water, bringing up water. Here's the water. It's coming up. It's fresh water from underground. Now, there are going to be some people that come and they drink from the water and they receive nourishment. And then there are going to be some people that don't. But the bubbling water just keeps bubbling anyway. You got to keep doing what you're doing regardless. And I'll give you one more. <laughs> I've got a video on my Shrimp Camp channel. It's probably one of the more popular videos, I think, called How Not to Give a F. <laughs> Trying not to curse all the time. How Not to Give a F. Look it up, Elliot Hulse. And I talk about the birds, right? Because you guys know, because you've been watching me so long, you know that oftentimes I'll look out the window for metaphors. I'll look out the window and talk about a tree or I'll talk about the grass, right? 
Well, that day I was looking out the window, I was, I was looking at a bird as I was answering this question. And I said, like this bird up here that's sitting on the, on the electrical wire, he's chirping, right? Because he's a bird. You're helping because you're a helper. I advise because I'm an advisor. He's a bird, so he's chirping because he's a bird. He's making music. There are going to be people that wake up in the morning, they hear that music, and they're grateful to that bird. Thank you, bird, for your beautiful song. Thank you, bird. I can sit here all day and receive the blessings of the music proceeding from your beak. And then there are going to be some people that are like, this damn bird woke me up. God damn it, birds. Why are these birds making noise? And he's going to throw a shoe at the bird. You know what the bird's going to do? He's going to hop up, let the shoe pass, sit back down on the wire, and keep chirping because the bird's doing what a bird does. The, the spring is doing what a spring does. You are doing what you do. I do what I do, fully free from any entanglements associated with it. No hangups, no expectations, just doing what you do. You're a helper. You're a caretaker. Don't get caught in the dilemma, dude. I hope that helps. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.